Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over some pieces and we're going to start with this magazine table. Now, when I got it, it was in really poor condition. It's very rickety uh, and uh, I just didn't see being able to fix it. So I'm going to take those spindles out of the bottom and use those later in a craft. But for now, I'm going to make a tray from this table top. To save a step, I'm going to leave it the color that it is and just do some heavily distressing on it. And that was the Magnolia Garden Transfer from Dixie Bell. And I'm going to use part of it on the tray. Now this has somewhat of a shiny finish on it, which I don't like. Uh, but it's sealed well, so I'll be able to use it for my transfer. And then I'm going to take my sander and do some heavy distressing on it. And then I'll finish it off with a flat clear coat or a matte finish clear coat. And that will take that shine away. So I want something in the background here. So I'm just inking up my kind disregard stamp. And I'm going to do... Uh, do this on on the entire top of this table. And then I'm just going to cut out a couple of these uh, and put on the tabletop and I'm just going to kind of do it in a couple of the corners. And this little butterfly was also uh, one of those transfers. So I'm just going to put that little butterfly in the front corner there. And, um, and then that's all the transfers that I'm going to be doing on this. So this kind of sets the stage for my color scheme here. So I'm going to be working with yellow and green and a little bit of white in this vignette. I was blessed today to get to meet another of my viewers. Her name was Gina, and she happened by the shop today, and uh, I was so excited to get to meet her and talk with her. So now this is all that I'm going to put on the top here, and uh, I'm going to take my orbital sander and just heavily distress around all the edges. Now, because I want to make this a tray, and it's so large, I feel like it needs some feet. So, I had a couple of large spindles in my stash, and I'm just going to cut two of these off to make the feet. So, I'll have four feet here, just using two of that same size um, section. So, once those were cut out, and I enlisted my husband to do that, they will work perfectly as feet, but first I'm going to have to take some of my air dry clay and fill in those holes and let them dry and then uh, these are also going to be painted white. So I just glue those on with some, uh, some good wood glue. I use the tight bond and a little bit of hot glue in the center to help hold it in place until it dries and then I'll paint the bottom of this tray and the legs in that same white. And this is what it looked like finished. And I thought this made a very good, sturdy tray. And now the next item that I'm going to make over is this lamp. And I really like the shape of the lamp, uh, but I feel like it needs some character. So I'm going to replace that um, lampshade with one that I had already made. And I actually made it for my lamp in my studio room, and then, uh, but it just it didn't work right. It didn't work well with the lamp that I used it on because um, that particular lamp had two bulbs in it, and it just it um, it was too small of a lampshade. It would be it wouldn't be real safe if I were to use it. So I'm going to use it on this one, but I'm going to add just a little something to it. So this I'm painting in the color Rebel Yellow, and uh, if ever um, a color was named wrong, I feel like it's this soft yellow because, and it actually looks softer in person, but uh, to name this Rebel Yellow, I just feel like it doesn't fit at all because it's just such a soft, calming color. 
I feel like rebel yellow would be a really strong yellow. But I give this two coats of this color and I'm not gonna white wax this or anything because I just really like the look that I got. I didn't feel like the detail needed to come out anymore and I just, I love the soft look of it so I didn't want to change the color of this. So instead of sealing it with a uh, white wax or, or even a dark wax, I just decided to uh, clear coat it and leave it like it was. Now this is the lampshade that I previously made, but the reason I'm adding to this one is because I need this to be a little longer. You know how a lot of times you'll put a shade on a lamp and some of the hardware will kind of show and I didn't want that to happen. so. I'm adding this gathered lace uh, to the bottom of this and then it will fit my lamp better. So this lamp was very easy, I feel like, to make over and I just love how the colors work together. And uh, I just made a hang tag to kind of bring it together even more and this is what it looked like finished. And now the next item is a, um, a damaged silver plate piece. This is not real silver, but it has the knob broken off the top of the lid, but I just love the shape of this. So I'm gonna paint this in the color fluff. Uh, and, um, and the reason I'm not doing buttercream, I, I would generally use buttercream here because I do think it would look really good but I'm trying to build a vignette here. So uh, this fluff white is almost white, but it has just a little bit of a softness to it. And so uh, it will go well enough with the tray. So I'm painting two coats on all of this, except for uh, the legs, the spout, and the handle. And I um, actually forgot that here I'm using slick stick. So I used slick stick because with, um, with silver plate on certain ones, uh, it doesn't stick as well if you don't give it a lot of curing time. So I just decided to go ahead and do a clear, I mean a uh, slick stick coat first, which will help it stick better. I generally just use this on glass, but uh, I just thought why not use it on this and then I wouldn't have to worry about uh, if it were to not stay as well. So I did one coat of the slick stick and then I did one coat of the color fluff. I didn't have to do two coats because I had this coat on first. So once I get this painted and let it dry, then I'm going to put a stamp on it. And I just used a stamp, stamp from the set I See Paris, which is a redesign by Prima set. And uh, just stamped that with some black stays on ink on the front and the back. And then this will be finished after I seal it, except for replacing that knob on the top. So I just found an old glass knob and I'm just gluing that with some E6000 and then this lamp will be finished. And then I made a little hang tag with it and added some yellow to uh, make it go better in the vignette. And now the next item that I'm making over, and I've made over one of these in the past, is uh, a birdhouse. I used to buy these wholesale and uh, they sold really well at first, now not so much. So um, I've been painting them and making them over. So uh, this one, uh, the, the body of it will be painted in the color fluff and the roof, of course, in this rebel yellow. And then the areas there at the bottom of the windows, the little ledge, uh, I'm gonna also paint that in this yellow. And then once I get this painted and I put my clear coat on it, uh, then I'm gonna, um, put one of the transfers from that same um, Magnolia pattern Dixie Bell transfer set. And um, I just picked one of the images that I felt like worked well with this and I'm gonna transfer it there to that big blank space on the top. 
as it turns out, this one worked perfectly with, uh, with this birdhouse. So I just transfer that, that right to the top there, and I love how this magnolia pattern looks on this birdhouse. I think it's just perfect. So I just transfer that on, and then, um, and then I'm gonna do some stamping. And the stamp that I'm gonna be using on that little box there below this is uh, one from that same set, I See Paris. And I'm just gonna take some tape and tape off what on the stamp I don't want on there, or won't fit on there rather. And then I'll ink my stamp up and pull that tape off. And then that's a good way to be able to use some of the larger stamps on smaller items. And then I've made some very simple changes to this, and I feel like it made a really big difference in this birdhouse. So after I ink this on that little area, then I'm gonna do a little bit of extra random uh, script stamping, and then, uh, and then I will put a clear coat on this, uh, actually a good couple of clear coats on this since it will be an outdoor item or could be an outdoor item, and then this will be finished. And I forgot to mention that on this, I take my ink pad and, and run it over, just kind of rub it over the high spots to just add some fake distress to this because I feel like it did need some distress and I wanted some darker distress. I didn't want any of that shiny metal to show through. And that's what happens when you try to sand on something that's metal. You almost never get it sanded down to the color underneath. It usually goes to all the way to the metal. Now the exception on that is if you painted it a darker color first and you just use a cloth and wet distress, sometimes you'll be able to get it down to that. But uh, sanding, you almost always get it down to that shiny metal, which is not a good look at all. So I just do this fake distressing on here and then, um, and then I spray this with a couple of coats of a clear finish and then this will be finished. Now instead of making hang tags for each individual item, obviously I did that but didn't do it on film with this one because uh, I had a different idea for a hang tag. Now, uh, I had a sweet little man bring me some uh, gospel tracks. Uh, my sister and I were both there, and he gave each of us one, and I thought this was just a really pretty track. So I thought, why not make these hang tags? Uh, and then, then they can be still used as tracks, uh, or they can be put on an item, and um, the item will also be a witness. So, what I did was obviously the first thing that I needed to do is rough up the edges. So I just take my scissors and scrape those edges really well, so that um, I take away this crisp new look. So I do that on this, and then I'm gonna um, antique around the edges just like I do with all my hang tags. And then I take my antiquing ink and my ink blending tool, and I just antique the edges all around. So this is already starting to look like our hang tags. Then the next thing that I want to do to make this look more like a hang tag is I love that it says God loves you, uh, but I need that to have some texture. So what I did was I just took a little strip of some uh, coffee stained tea towel and, and just kind of roughed up those edges. And then I'm going to stamp Jesus loves you. I just happen to have that stamp. Now, if you don't have it, you could hand write it or um, use some of your smaller stamps. But... Um, but this is one that I just happened to have thrifted at one time or another. So I'm going to stamp that on this little strip. 
And now I'm just going to hot glue that into place and uh, hide the original writing on it. And uh, so here we are adding some texture and some shabbiness, and but we're not taking away from the original message. And then I had some scraps of this green lace. So what I want to do is just cut some uh, little shapes to kind of mimic the leaves. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be a shabby tag. Uh, but I'm just very slightly making a leaf shape, just somewhat. And then I'm going to glue that over some of these leaves and kind of pinch it a little bit to give it a little bit of, of texture. Now I think we could stop there, but uh, you know me, I want to add layers so... I'm going to uh, also do some of my shabby roses over the top of some of these flowers, and that will just add all kinds of texture to this. Now again, you could just stop here, or you could just add the flowers and not the leaves, or uh, just give it whatever look that you want, but I just really like the colors in these flowers, and I kind of wanted to keep that somewhat the same. So I had this little doily that was damaged, and um, actually this one wasn't really damaged so much as it was stained, and, um, and I cut the little rose that was already in the center of this, so I didn't have to work on this one. This was already done. I just cut it out and glued that on. I just glued it right in the center of one of the, one of the roses. And now I'm going to take that same doily and use all the pieces of it. So um, I'm going to cut that next little strip out and then use it to make another flower. So on this one, I'm going to use the outer edge that is, uh, has those little pointy scallops. And I thought those would be perfect for leaves on a flower. So I, I'm gluing it around the large flower that's there. Uh, so it mimics kind of mimics the shape of the flower that's already there and I just kind of pinch it together so that uh, the leaves aren't just laying flat and that makes it look like little flower leaves. I think some of the best materials to make flowers with and you can just kind of create your own flower uh, by using doilies that uh, that have been damaged or um, or stained and most of them have some sort of a scalloped edge and that's perfect for making flowers so I'm just making all of the outer edge here and I left a little bit open in the center because I'm gonna glue uh, some other lace and in a um, button there so uh, this will very much mimic a flower So what I decided to, to do here is take some more of that doily and use it to make a little shabby rose in the center. And you know that in doing that, I just uh, start with one of the ends that has a knot tied in it. And then I'll glue that down to the center of where I want that shabby bow and then... Um, or shabby rose rather, and then I just kind of keep wrapping and twisting until it forms a shabby rose. And then that will just act as the center of the flower. So we're not actually building a shabby rose here. We're just doing that center the same way we make the roses. And on that one, I didn't worry with twisting in different directions because I didn't need the extra texture. I just needed something to fill in that center. And then here I'm just taking some more of that same doily and making another shabby rose at the top. And now you can't tell at all that this was just a store-bought track. And when someone gets this one, um, they're very likely to pay more attention to it. So anytime you get any store-bought card, uh, look at it and see if you can make a hang tag out of it by uh, 
maybe it's a small one that you could make a hang tag out of or a larger one that you could just cut a section of it off that maybe you like the art that's on it. Um, and that's another good way to make a hang tag. So I think that's enough shabby roses on here. That's enough flowers, but I'm just going to tuck a little piece of lace right there in the top, and I'll just kind of scratch it up there for some extra texture. And then I added a, a little button over the top of that lace, and, um, and then put one of my uh, little pearl beads that I get from the Dollar Tree uh, right in the center of that first flower. And then I just felt like it needed some of that white to be brought down. And now that I have the back, the bottom looking the way I want it, uh, then uh, now it's time to give some character to the top. And I thought the best way to do that would be make just a little shabby bow with some little strips of lace. So I just cut a few little strips of lace uh, and um, made a shabby bow for the top. And if you've not seen me make those, I just take those strips. Usually I, I take several strips and tie them together. But on this one, obviously, I just needed a few. And so I just put a little, a few little strips of fabric and tied them together in the center and made that shabby bow. And then that's a very simple way to make a shabby bow. And for one this size, literally just little pieces, little scrap pieces. And then just tied it with a little thin piece of fabric and cut that off and glued that right to the top. You can make all different sizes and styles of these shabby bows. And again, generally you would use several strips and you wanna use different types uh, of fabric, different colors and different different textures and that will create all different kinds of shabby bows. So now I'm happy with the front of this and I'm just going to add a little something to the back. And all that I'm going to do to the back is just um, take a piece of lace, actually a few pieces of lace, and just kind of scrunch that on the bottom and uh, Add some texture there and just kind of layer that up, adding a little bit of scrunching as I go and some buttons, and then this one will be finished. So I'm going to be looking for other tracks that I can do this to because I think it's, it is a great way to uh, share a track. And now is the time that I can share a tag from one of my viewers. So I received this in the mail today from Chris Gray. And I just fell in love with her tag. This one is another one that is just absolutely my style. And I just love what she did. I love the uh, texture that she made with the cheesecloth. I love that flower and the softness of the pink around her torn edge on that piece and the old vintage looking ribbon at the top. I think she just did a wonderful job on this. And I also love all the three dimensional pieces she added with the little uh, bug at the top and the little butterfly under the glass. I think that is just gorgeous. And of course, I always love lace on the hang tags. And I love that this one can be used as a gift tag. I hope you guys keep those hang tags coming because uh, I get so excited when I see a new one and I can't wait for my wall to be covered. I'm loving this yellow and green and white vignette. I just love the color and I don't do a lot of the softer yellow, uh, but I, I really think that I'm gonna be adding some more of that because I just love how it looks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.